Ireland and Argentina this Sunday is the final game of the Autumn Nation series and hopefully it's going to be a bit of a cracker. I feel like these two teams play each other more than they actually do. They don't play each other that much. But with the World Cup history between them, it kind of feels like they do. Um, we'll go over the squads, the recent history between the sides, some predictions, stats. And as always, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Um, yeah, Argentina pretty much only win at World Cups, eh? I don't think they've ever won in Dublin. And uh, the recent history between the sides is 4-1 to one, with that one being in the 2015 Rugby World Cup. So, yeah, Ireland generally have the wood over Argentina, especially when they are at home. Um, the average score across the last five games is 26-23 to Ireland. But that World Cup game where Argentina did get the win was a pretty big win, 40-plus points for Argentina. Every other game tends to be Ireland 20-something, like 28 or 27 no, 29, 23, or um, in Argentina, like 17. Three of the games they've only scored 17, one 19. So, yeah, just over 10-point victors, generally, Ireland over Argentina. So, um, yeah, we'll kind of see how things go. Obviously, Ireland are on a big, massive, well, it's only two games, but a really good-looking run. Like, of all the autumn teams, Ireland looked absolutely sharp. What is it with Ireland, like, looking so good between World Cup years? Right now, they're looking like the team to beat. 29-20, uh, dominant performance over the All Blacks. 60 points to 5. I talk about revenge against Japan over the Rugby World Cup. Like, man, it's an absolute hiding and a half. Uh, Argentina, I think Ledesma, at least last I checked, his contract hasn't been renewed for the World Cup. And he probably needs to show us what his team is going to be able to do going forward. Because it's been uninspiring, uh, to say the least. Like, the results in the Rugby Championship... Albeit with not having any home games and you know having guys living out of bubbles, it's just on the pitch. It's not been. You can't really see kind of what the 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 project is or what the game plan is. Maybe it's just me being too much of a casual observer. I don't know, but yeah, it, it hasn't looked. Apart from having kind of the ability to defend for large periods, it's kind of not been that flash. That being said, against Italy, the kicking game was phenomenal, and when they won that second game against Wales. The kicking game is kind of what did it for them. So if they can get on top of that area, maybe it'll be a bright spot for them. But they did beat Italy last week, 37-16. Like I said, the kicking game did wonders for them. They lost 29-20 to France, which was kind of, again, a bit of an uninspiring loss. But maybe a better loss than people predicted because France, team gets talked up. You know, offloading game was supposed to give Argentina a hiding. And Argentina did give a good account of themselves. So maybe there is a bit of positivity before Ledesma has the final contract negotiations thing. I'm not sure. It may have been done in the last week, but anyway. So yeah, a big test for his guys going into this one to see if they can make history in Dublin, but the Irish guys will be looking to stop that for sure. In terms of the squads, the Irish have picked a pretty stable squad, and that seems to be Andy Farrell's thing. His thinking is, play your best team. Whatever that means. Um, like, the All Blacks are at the way other end of the rotation spectrum, and that we're going to give everybody some game time. Guys are going to play in different positions. So what that means is maybe you don't build that um, that chemistry or that continuity between the players. What you do build is the depth, but at the cost of those kind of playing combinations. Whereas Ireland have not blooded as many guys by any means, but the combinations are really clicking pretty well. Especially when you've got guys who play together uh, at club level as well. Those kind of relationships are already there, but... Um, it's kind of a balance as to which one is right, which one is wrong. I know in New Zealand we have tried both, and uh, both have failed leading into World Cups as well. Graham Henry's approach was very different from John Mitchell's. Neither of them won on first try anyway for for, um, for Ted. But yeah, Ireland, uh, same forward pack. Porter, Kelleher, Furlong front row, which is a mean, mean looking front row, very strong at scrum time. Uh, Henderson and Ryan. Very good second row. James Ryan continues with the work rate, and he's captain this week in the absence of Johnny Sexton. And then uh, Doris van der Fleer and Conan. Nice balanced back row. Uh, it's probably Josh van der Fleer's turn to get like man of the match because I think Doris and, and Conan have had one each, haven't they? They've both been outstanding in the Japan and New Zealand games, respectively. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty mean-looking forward pack. Argentina will not shy away from the physical stuff, but that's certainly where the Irish got on top of the All Blacks last week, and then they needed that that four dominance to be executed well, though, by the backs, right? Because Gibson Park and Sexton were, were on fire, especially Gibson Park. His distribution has been phenomenal. Like, if your forwards are going to give you that, that platform, you need, to, you need to do something with it, and he has. But he's out injured, so it's Murray and Carberry. 
So it's a changed 9-10 combo. And I, I kind of almost wish Casey was there ahead of Murray, which is maybe a bit disrespectful to Murray. But I associate Casey with kind of quick high tempo, quick passing. But he's still a young man. And I guess it's kind of everybody jumping up one step, right? If you were on the bench, now you're the starter. And if you're outside the 23, now you're on the bench. It would maybe be a bit much to expect him to kind of skip over the bench and start. But um, we'll kind of see how Connor Murray does. Um, I just don't associate him with that kind of quick play. Maybe again, I'm not doing him uh, not doing him justice. Hopefully he has a good game. Uh, Henshaw and Ringrose, that's great news to see Henshaw back after a long injury layoff. He's had a good 2021 when he's been fit. And Ringrose just looked to have so much time on the ball last week. It's just... A sign of a guy in good form. Uh, Bella Kuhn comes in on the right wing, which is also uh, good news for him. I've seen him play a fair bit. He's one of those guys that looks, he just looks lanky and rangy, and he doesn't look like he should be that quick, but he's very quick. So I'm kind of excited to see what he can do, because I've seen him a couple of years ago for, uh, for Ulster. I think he had a big injury layoff, and he's kind of come back looking pretty sharp. So yeah, uh, very excited to see how he goes. But James Lowe's been in phenomenal form. Best we've seen him play for Ireland, I'm sure. Uh, making some good defensive plays to keep everybody happy and then doing the ball and hand stuff. Plus that big old left boot. Uh, we know what he can do. And then Keenan, solid as a rock at the back. He will have seen, hopefully, uh, Argentina's kicking game against Italy last week. I mean, they, they did get some pretty good pay. They make Minotti make the old error. But Keenan is really, really good under the high ball. So I'm, I'm sure he won't be flinching at the chance to um to take on those responsibilities because he's done it so well he ate up everything the all blacks threw at him last week uh bench sheehan healy and o'toole so changes in the um in the irish front row replacements with sheehan and o'toole coming in burn and amani will bring some breakdown pain when they come on and then casey harry burn and keith Earl. so casey and harry burn are your replacements as i mentioned kind of guys who maybe need some minutes and the fact that there's injuries for the front runners means these guys do get minutes how many they get we'll kind of have to wait and see uh, for the Argentinians, I mentioned they don't mind the physical stuff, and they've picked some pretty physical guys. It's a pretty stable lineup as far as I could see. Gaggio, Montoya, and Cordella is the same front row, and they are seemingly the, the preferred front rowers at the moment. I do think they look a bit of scrummaging side when Cordella is playing. Uh, Petty comes back in after an injury like a fortnight ago, so he'll bring that kind of line-out skill set alongside his big, bulky Partner Lavanini, who I mentioned won't shy away from the physical stuff. Neither will Crema, who's at seven. Grandona comes in at six. And uh, Matera shifts to eight. So if Crema can just keep his temper, then things will kind of go fine. But he will need to be physical. Because like when the Argentinians beat the All Blacks, it was the physicality that also kind of did it. There's kind of been sides like Ireland that have been able to bully the All Blacks a little bit in recent times. Why am I talking about the All Blacks so much? I'm still burned about last week's result. But yeah. Um, just trying to highlight, I guess, that Argentina, they can play that game. And um, yeah, if they, uh, if they step up to that challenge, they'll give themselves a chance, albeit they are a long shot. Uh, Kubele and Carreras are the 19 combos, the same as last week, building that bit of a relationship as well. Carreras has only played, he may be getting into double figures of games at 10. He's traditionally been a winger, but uh, the fact that he is a winger kind of come fly half he's got a bit of zip so you do need to watch out for him because he likes to take the ball to the line now uh, De La Fuente and Moroni is the same midfield as last week De La Fuente was putting a lot of little kicks so if the Irish defenders are going to come up quick they'll need to look out for that Sinti moves up from the bench onto the left wing Carreras that's Mateo moves from left to right wing and Buffelli is there at fullback Buffelli he was the guy uh causing a lot of havoc at the back of the Italian uh, lines competing for those high balls. He's a big guy, and he can get pretty high up in the air as well. Uh, Bosch, Kales, and Bello are the uh, front row replacements. So Bello comes in. Paulos is still there. Isa drops to the bench. Bertrano, Sanchez, and Facundo Cordero are there as well. So Facundo is coming into the 23 after not playing last week. It's the third week in a row. Nico Sanchez has had to ride the pine with Carreras getting the start. Um, Stats-wise, between these two teams, like... I mean, you've seen Ireland, they, they play a lot of kind of quick, short passes, like their number of passes in the game is high, and the number of carries they get through is really high. Like, I think I averaged out, it's like 130 carries a game. And to put that into context, a lot of teams don't even get to 100. So they're, they're recycling the ball a lot. That's why I guess your number nine is, is going to be crucial to that game plan. Um, Argentina don't get to 100 carries a game. But to be fair, a lot of those numbers come from when they've played in the rugby championship against the likes of the box and the, the All Blacks where they've not had that much ball. 
less ball equals less carries. Uh, when Argentina dominate the kicking game, like they did against uh, Italy, and like they did against Wales in that second game where they won during the Lions tour, um, they look really good. But like 51 kicks against uh, Italy last week, Argentina. 51, I think, is the most I've seen all season. But as I said, it wasn't just all booting long. Some of it was up and unders for Buffelli to compete. Some of it was little balls through from um, De La Fuente. And some of it was just kind of your big kicks for territory. So it's, uh, it's a good mix. So if they can get that right, they could cause some trouble. But if one thing we have seen from that Irish backfield is they are generally pretty comfortable and as i mentioned lowe's got a big boot Heenan, uh, keenan's right under the high ball so um yeah it's it's not an easy one to get right against ireland but we'll kind of wait and see um ireland will probably have the lion's share of the ball i don't think they've had any games this year where they've not finished with more position than their opposition it's just it's just the game they play but as i said argentina are kind of used to playing that way from the rugby championship uh, where they were often kind of living off, you know, 40-odd percent possession or maybe less. Um, but it's whether they can take their chances when they do get that ball as to whether they can cause the um, Irish guys any trouble. In terms of the predictions, Ireland are pretty comfortable favourites. The rugby forecast algorithm says Ireland by 18 points, probably buoyed by the fact that Argentina don't win in Dublin. And uh, the bookies over here in New Zealand, last time I checked which was this morning, uh, have Ireland by 14 points. So Ireland, pretty comfortable favourites in this one. It's not a World Cup game. It's not a World Cup quarterfinal. So Argentina will probably be pretty big underdogs, as I mentioned. But yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you reckon this one is going to go? If you want British and Irish Lions gear for Christmas, they're still selling it off. 60% on some of the stuff that I've seen. Check that out. Link in the description there, an affiliate of the channel. So that's always nice. But um, yeah, it should be a cracking game. I think it's on at like three something in the morning here in New Zealand. So I'll either get up and watch it live or, or maybe sleep and then watch it first thing. But anyway, it should be a good game. I'm very much looking forward to it. And um, yeah, it'll be a nice way, way to kind of round off these autumn games. But yeah, you guys take care. Let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.